In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again. Today, it's Rob Riggle. What? Come the on. The Rigster, baby. Give me a little cheers. Oh, We're cheers sipping a little to sauce you. today. This is and, wonderful. And uh, this, is, this is some nice, smooth sauce. Mm-hmm. Man, I like it so much. Man, I was, I, I was commenting uh, uh, earlier. Your whiskey game is super tight. I got a whole cart there. We should put it on camera at some point, but I have been collecting over the years. This is actually about half the size. He's seen it at my house. I have probably, tr- yeah, maybe double to triple this at home. That's amazing. I've gotten gifts from really high-end collectors that are that do me well, that know way more than I know, but yeah. this has been a, an amalgamation of over the years of doing this show, people suggesting and, and or bringing me bottles and all that stuff. That's fantastic. Now, Kansas City's got a, a uh, whiskey maker, uh, Jay Rieger. Jay Rieger. Rieger. You shout out to some, the Rieger. Yeah, shout out to Rieger. I used to be in business with those guys, but then mm-hmm. I, um, you know, I, I was doing a, a vodka thing and it, it got all convoluted, but I still believe in them. Yeah, you do. I believe in them. I like them. They're good. They're good men. Uh, they're, they make a good quality. What's it called? Bourbon. Uh, Jay Rieger. Jay Rieger is the brand as well. Yeah, that's the brand. Get yourself some Rieger, I guess. Get out there and have a sip sap of it. Let me see what the bottle looks like. Is it a sexy bottle? That means something it's to me. It's pretty good. It's got good heritage. You got to have it's style. It's got good lineage. Yeah, it does? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, the uh, the last time you and I saw each other, we were in Hawaii. That's right. Playing. See, we sound like high rollers when, when you say things like that. Well, it was we, a charity event. It was. And it we was. were doing good for the kids, which, which is very nice. And I don't mind flying to Hawaii to play in a charity event. For kids. Yeah. If it's giving money for kids, I'm all about it. We're all about the kids, man. We're all about helping the kids, doing yeah. the right thing. Yeah. That's never in question. No, speaking of which, I saw a billboard last night at one of those LED trucks uh, of uh, kids who have been abducted. And uh, a few of them I recognized. A few of those guys. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Some of the guys that I, I think, because I'm a part of a kid kidnapping. When you said LED truck, I didn't know what you meant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was envisioning like a, one of those Escalades that have the glow underneath. No, 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 no. <laughs> this wasn't a party bus in Vegas. That's what I said. This that's, was just That's screens. the first thing that popped in my mind. Yeah, but a few of the kids I had seen, because I'm part of a group of people that kidnap kids, and it's nice that they, some of our top picks well, were on the board. we're finally getting the billing <laughs> that, they, <laughs> that they rate. Finally. It's terrible. We're, I'm just kidding. No, but it was a huge truck last night. It was like that. It was insane. All four sides had a picture of uh, missing kids on it. Oh, and I was wow. like, I guess that is the move now because milk cartons aren't doing yeah, they're it. They're not cutting it anymore. No. And, and they've gone away from milk cartons and more to the the you know the big gallon plastic things. Which and you know, by the way, that's a waste of milk. We don't need all that, dude. Just put it on there. You never get to it. And never, You're never going to finish. It's always going to spoil. There's always a little bit left. You, Boy, you, does it stink, too. Mm, oh. It's stinky. So, so I, one time my, my little child, they're older now, but when they were little, spilled milk in the back. You hit him. my car. You hit him. But they didn't tell anybody, okay? Mm. And I didn't see it right away. And I get back in the car, you know, and it's it it was the devil. <laughs> it was the it was the devil's a hole. I mean, really, really bad. And it there was I scrubbed and tried to clean. Nothing's and, taking that out. Oh, it just it got into stuff, man. So there is crying over spilled milk there in the real household. Absolutely is. Yeah. Cry over yeah. spilled milk because it don't I want to know that you did it. Was it a car that you loved too? Or is it a... It wasn't even my car. Oh, my God. That's was, even more fun. It was my dad's Cadillac. So then my dad was like, what in the goddamn... You know? And I'm like, I'm like, I don't know, Dad's the dangest thing. It must have been a skunk. <laughs> skunk done got in the caddy, Daddy. <laughs> skunk done got in the caddy, you know, Daddy. You know the skunks love the caddies, Dad. They get in that caddy, these country baby. roads out here in Kansas. I'm sure if somebody hit it, Mom probably hit it. Yeah, Mom. well, she's going to do it if anybody. <laughs> By the way, I had to go to the doctor's appointment yesterday. That was a big That was a big thing. It's so funny. When I get way to the doctor's, I empty all my pockets. Me too. Because I'm, I'm, it sucks because I'm like, the, the clothes are like five, maybe 10 pounds. Or like, it's like three. I'm it's like, like 20, 20, 25 pounds, right? <laughs> this shirt's got to be 30 pounds. This is a 30-pound shirt, dude. The guy was like, do you want to uh, derobe? And I said, well, I'd like to know my real weight. He yeah. goes, 
it's still your real weight. I was like, no, mm, it's not. No. When I'm at these home, these jeans, because because I'm over, I'm like six two. You're you're tall, six man. Six one. Yeah. These are yeah. that's a lot of material. So, yeah. That, I mean, these jeans are heavy. That's right. They're not two pound uh, sweatpants. I like that we're doing this. This is only people that that ha- are on the verge of being fat. Uh, yeah, fat. <laughs> that would be like the the shoes and the pants. <laughs> He needs the extra pounds. You know, there's people that go in there that, that are like, "Can I put stuff in my pocket to get the weight up?" Yeah, yeah. He gave me on the weight yeah. thing, and then we went through the whole rigmarole that they the questions and uh, I I lean on my much. balls of my feet when they do the height. Yeah, me too. Just to maybe get a half inch more, just a little. As I max out, I go right. full extension as much as I can. I'm elongating. My, so when they do the body, you know, measurements or whatever, they're like the your BMI, weight compared yeah. to your height, you know, and all that stuff. But yeah, I empty my pockets because I feel For like sure. it's a shakedown. I'm like the clothing I'm wearing, sweatshirt, you know, shoes, everything I've got on. These are man sized clothes. Uh-huh. That's seven pounds easy. That's seven. You got to give me seven. And they're like, it's three. It's three I'm max. Like, yeah, and two I'm, and a half, maybe, <laughs> maybe three, mostly two and a half. But then they get you in there and they do that whole thing where they let you feel good about one thing and then you feel awful about everything else. Mm-hmm. He'll be like blood pressure, but look, not bad, yeah. not bad. And he's like. Oof, cholesterol, this is really bad. Yeah, your LDL or whatever it is. Right, 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 right. There's one's good, one's bad. Yeah, you know? I never like, know which is which, but they're always telling me, you're fine here, you're fine here. But, you know. This is bad. And I know it's, I always know it's going to be in the in danger zone. Sure. Right, where I'm I'm, I'm elevated beyond uh-huh. the level they're Elevated, coming. that's what they say. Yeah, and, you're elevated. Uh, it's because, you know, I eat like shit. I do. What do you want me to do? You know, I'm not a, I'm not a master chef, and I don't like things that taste good. I don't like it. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I like I like fried chicken. I like burgers. I like trash. You know, I like trash. And How I like often? dipping sauces. I oh, like my sauces. dipping sauces. I need my honey mustard, my ranch. Oh, I put ranch on anything. Barbecue, whatever. I, I love my sauces too. Yeah, it's so hard to it's hard to eat how you're supposed to because mm-hmm. the we've got a sauce drawer. Do you have a sauce drawer at the house? Yes. That's how Luna. Do you have a sauce drawer? No, you're too young. Oh, with all the like Taco Bell sauces. Correct. There you go. There it is. Yeah. There we you have, go. We have and a myriad all, yes. of them. And my Chick Fil A sauces. Chick Fil A sauces, got, baby. Yeah, I got I them. Always I have those saved. And I, I even listen. I'm I'm a connoisseur of ranch. You know, restaurant grade ranch is important to me. I don't do Hidden Valley anymore. I used to do it. I could maybe dip a carrot into it. But again, that was like what I was trying, and it was a failure. Mm-hmm. I need restaurant-grade ranch. Really? And and Cheesecake Factory has the best ranch. Are you so, putting us on to a no, new hot take? Yes. Cheesecake Factory has number one ranch, you think? It has top-grade ranch. Now, wow. there's other grade ranches out there. Sure. But it's top grade. Right. And you can get it in a big mason jar. You can get a pint of that stuff. <laughs> and it's good for like two weeks. At and Cheesecake, I, they sell oh, it? They sell I will the stop. There's a, there, there's a mall that I eat at the Cheesecake Factory too much. <laughs> but I stop in and it's it's they know who I am. When I come in, they're like, ranch today? I'm like, yeah, give me give me a, yeah. give me a jar. Baby, can you pick up a pint of ranch on the way home? <laughs> That's awesome. And they give the ingredients. And this is what's better, great about the oh, internet. There's the crack there. Look at this. But let me tell you something. My wife makes us homemade ranch at the house. And oh. it's great. It's restaurant. It's great, but the problem is it's almost too. Um, yeah, what is the word I'm looking for? It's like too culinary. It's like too homemade. Okay. You want some of the secret jazz that mm-hmm. I don't know. Some of the stuff that some of the industrial level. Yeah, give yeah. me something that drips from the ceiling that falls in there. <laughs> That's probably what makes ranch really good. You know they they have a big pot and they're <laughs> yeah. just looking up, going and there it is. There Got it, it is, and, and now it's bag finalized. The, yeah, bag that up. That was like the. Um, <laughs> God, that reminded me of that documentary. Remember the Blue Bell controversy? Do you remember this? That's where I got that from. Do you know Blue Bell ice cream? Yeah. Years ago, they had a pr- they had a controversy where they had a outbreak of uh, whatever it was. What was it? What was that broke down? Uh, yeah, it was in 2020. They paid 19 million and pled guilty to charges of shipped contaminated products. To the outbreak, listeria, and they said it was from the ceiling. In the factory. That's where I got that from. It was dripping into the ice cream from the ceiling. They didn't know, though. No, no, no. They They, knew. They knew. (laughs) Well, some of the workers were like, the conditions were ridiculous because the ventilation wasn't good enough. So they had complained about it. Oh, okay. But the higher-ups were like, shut up. Not now. It's ice cream. That's Pack always, it up. That's always the best thing to do when you hear about a problem is just pretend you didn't hear yeah, about exactly. it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's what every company in the United States does. No, what, really? That's not, can't be right. No. That's just, you know what it is? It's just weak-ass managers who are like, uh, I don't want to deal with a problem today. Look, man, I'm that's hungover. It. Just I'm scoop hung... the listeria out of <laughs> the chocolate chocolate chip. Exactly. I'll be at the cheesecake factory if you need me. <laughs> <laughs> what is your... Because I've gotten addicted, man. I used to not really love ice cream. wasn't a thing. For, it was I'd have it once in a while. Now we have to keep it in the freezer. I have to have ice cream, and I have it almost oh, you, every you are, night. We are such kindred spirits. I uh, I I have a. This is embarrassing as shit. 
almost every night I have a chocolate shake after dinner. Whoa. Almost every night. Bad now, boy. It's gotten so bad that my, my girlfriend, who you met. Yeah, she's wonderful. She, uh, she's like, hey, I respect that you love this ice cream. Yeah. Stuff, but could we talk about maybe just doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Mm. <laughs> and I said, mm, you're really going thin ice, you know? Yeah, you're skating. Ma- maybe you ought to put that shit on ice. You know? I got to tell you something. She <laughs> looks like she doesn't have chocolate shakes every night. That's she, why. She eats well. She's in great shape. Yeah, yeah she's she, physically So fit. I can see her judging this behavior. Yeah. Being but like, too she, many. She does make the shake, though. Like, at the end of the day, she'll go, all right. Next thing I know, the blender's working. I'm oh, like, oh, here we go. The sound of that really gets oh, you going on. Oh, my God. Yeah. And now I'm... I, I dress it up. Sometimes I'm like, just to, you know, like, hey, baby, you know, look at me get on the on the healthy train. I'll put blueberries on my chocolate ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> like and I'm like, I'm like see? Huh? See? And she's like, she just shakes her head in the most disappointed way. But I'm like, I'm working on it, babe. Yeah, I'm trying. Well, you are. You're making strides. Show him the video <laughs> of, uh, of Bootsy Spaghetti that we saw yesterday. This is like the Bootsy making spaghetti. This may be one of the funniest things I think I've ever seen. Because whenever I feel like I do something... Yeah, little bo- <laughs> little, little Boosie doing spaghetti. Whenever I feel, hold on. Whenever I feel like uh, I've done something incorrectly, look at yeah. how much sugar he's putting into. What? That's sugar? That's granulated Stop. sugar in his spaghetti. That's a whole bag. <laughs> yeah, dude. What's he doing? He's ruining. <laughs> no, it's hilarious. But here's the okay. Here's the thing. <laughs> oh my god! It could be a bit. Oh my! It's it gotta could be, be a bit. bit. But I gotta tell you, he's wild and hilarious. And Boosie makes spaghetti with a half a bag of granulated sugar. But here's the difference. <laughs> look at the one comment. God damn. God damn. <laughs> but here's the difference of like, uh, like, look, you and I are closer in age certainly than him. And yeah. he, immediately, McCone, who's 24, goes, I bet you th- I bet you it slaps. I bet you it's good. So he, the kid generation thinks this might be pretty good. And I was like, <sighs> absolutely not. Open-minded. Yeah, open-minded. He's a little too open-minded. Yeah, you, you're... My watching the video, just watching it right now, I feel the inflammation in my body. Oh well, yeah, you're getting, you got diabetes watching <laughs> right, the video. I did just now, but it's it's remarkable. I think I've never seen it. But so I said to him, we went over the argument: Is this for the internet? Because he's very funny, and he, yeah. he'll. But also, I, I don't know. It looks legit. <laughs> it, he, the, look, the look on his face says, I'm, "This is what this I do. is what I do. I this cook it like this is what I do." He's all business. Like it, <laughs> yeah. there's no wink and a nod. There's uh-uh. no grin. No, that's right. This is who I am. <laughs> this is what business. I do. Right, this is a live stream. Right, so we saw what we saw. They saw what we saw. There was no, he didn't do another take of it. Now, do you have, like when I was a kid, I remember I got yelled at because my mom for a while was like, no sugary cereals because we were eating too much bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> so she took it away from us. And then what we do, we would just put, I mean, spoonfuls of sugar into Cheerios. I mean, we would literally dump half of the jar. So as I've gotten older, I still have a few things that I overindulge like that. Do you have any little secret ones where you put too much sugar in the thing or you... I was a I was a, a, a tons of sugar in my Cheerios guy. Yeah, I'm mean, too I much. It. Where the milk was just sugar. Yeah, and and I could actually see the the. Oh yeah, I love it when it's peeking, it's peeking through. Yeah, the sugar yeah. peeking through. And like I would mix, I don't know, I smash it down quick before you know. The, when you feel your teeth go on the milk, the it's, granular. Yeah, it's crunch. bad. It's yeah. bad. I've I, I've since tried to get away from it, but like I was saying with the the shake thing. Yeah. I can't, ice cream is my, I can't give it up. I could give up like candy bars and uh, pop. Yeah. Fine. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm over, I'm over, I, I never was a sweets guy. I, me neither. I never was sweets. I did, I, I do, chocolate has got me. It's Chocolate's got the hook in. Chocolate. Chocolate's got the hook in me. Ice cream has got the hook in me. Yeah, it's tough. It really, really does. I, I need it after most meals. Me too. I know. It's really weird. I think, I don't know why it's doing that. I blame the pandemic if I'm being honest. That's when, I, that's when I really doubled started, down on it. I really me, doubled me down. Me start ice cream on pandemic. Yes. I just couldn't. I was like, well, we're here. Yeah. We're not going to go out for a dinner. We cooked. We did all this work. We cleaned. Yeah. Shouldn't we fucking have some ice cream? I, I, I got into reward myself with a treat. Yeah. And that pandemic, I did that. I really doubled up on my ice cream in d- yeah. <laughs> during that time frame. And now I can't get out. And now uh, you're stuck. Now man. I'm in. And that's fine. Honestly, who cares? Yeah. I mean, listen, this is all, look, what? We're not going to be around that long. Come on. No, We're not. Dude. So just savor it. There's got to be a couple vices in your life. This yeah, wonderful sauce. Little, little sauce concoction, just a right? a little sauce. A little something, that makes the day worthwhile. Mm-hmm. A little ice cream, that makes the day worthwhile. If you're lucky enough to you know, get a little some, that makes the day worthwhile. Big time. Big right? time. So that's it. Those are the only joys in life. It's enjoy them. Yeah, what else is left? Because yeah, your kids are grown. Because we say we deny ourselves so much all the time. Yeah. You know, it's time to... 
to have these little moments of pleasure. Let it rip. Let it rip. That's Let what I'm rip. saying. Mm-hmm. Your kids are grown now, they're, so they're free, right? Well, pretty much. Uh, I've still got a high school boy. Oh, wow. Is yeah. he your size? Uh, no, but he's going through puberty now. Oh, really? So, so it's about to happen. It's about to happen. He's got the paws. Oh, yeah. And he'll grow into them. Uh, Is he an athlete? He was, but then he was a late bloomer. Yeah. Right? Because he's just kind of hitting it now. He's a sophomore, halfway through a sophomore. Were you like that too or no? Yes. I was the last guy in my class to hit puberty. And then you're a big boy. And then it, then it kind of came all at all at once. On my junior and senior year, it just kind of... and my, yeah. I was still growing into college, like freshman year and stuff. I'm still growing. <laughs> I'm still growing now at yeah. 40. Yeah. And... uh so, so my boy, yeah, he'll he'll grow into, it, but he kind of the team sports left him because they all just got bigger than him. Sure, the, I remember I took the the his eighth grade class on the, their big field trip to Washington D.C. or whatever, and these guys were six foot two, these eighth grade boys. I know, and they were massive. They were coming up with mustaches like McCone. Yeah, they're all grown, you know, and they were they're like Mr. Riggle, Mr. Riggle. I was like, Jesus Christ, my boy's got no chance. You know, I know. What are they feeding these kids to make them so big? I saw a, I saw something on it. Of like uh, the best top high school basketball teams in California, and the average height was like six five or six six. I was like, what? That's there insane. was one dude in my high school who was six yeah. eight. One dude. He was the guy. And six eight. That's amazing for high school. Well, he was. He was. A, he was our son. He was the. He was the only guy of that kind of. He had to dominate was, that whole conference. That yeah, whole it was ridiculous. League, yeah. Everybody else was like, you know, five ten to maybe six two if you're lucky. Right. If you're yeah, lucky. Yeah, yeah. Our our basketball team, you know, consisted of five eleven to six two. Right. And but now I feel like they're kid. They're all way way bigger than we ever were. And I'm maybe it's all working. Maybe the HGH and the booster is working. But God bless, dude. Keep yeah. shooting it up. <laughs> so what he's into now, because the team sports passed him by, but he got into MMA. Oh, really? Yeah. So he, he he he's pretty good. He goes to his training. He does it. He works hard at it. Now, what if he wants to go pro? Are you cool with that? Like, if he really commits and this becomes a career. You know, it's to me, if he goes, he's, one of two things is going to happen. He's going to get popped in the mouth and he's not going to like it. Yeah. Or he's going to pop someone else in the mouth and love it. Yeah. And so... It, it, it'll it'll sort itself out quickly. Yeah, you'll yeah, you'll yeah, you right. know what I mean. He'll figure so, it out. He'll figure. He'll it figure out. it out. Well, I'm not. Uh, you know, I I got into it a little bit. Yeah. Rogan showed me it, but the thing that I'm into now. Show him. Uh, you, have you seen these slap offs? Have you seen these? Slap-offs? Oh my god, I've seen it. It's an insane a thon. They're, they're just they're trying to kill each this. other. It's amazing. Man. They shatter. Their faces are puffed <laughs> out to here. The 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 concussion. They have to be concussed oh, every yeah, time, dude, right? Yeah. Well, I love that they did. So they're allowed to do. So one, the career is like got to be two, what two fights? And it's, you're done. It's one afternoon. Yeah, you're done in an afternoon. But this is like that. Like you watch this, and they do. They're allowed to do three, one, two, and they have to hit on the third one. Yeah. And it's oh. unbelievable how hard they hit these people. And it's, and, but like, it's so funny that for so long, slapping a man was like such a crazy, big, disrespectful thing to do. Yeah. But now you have to sit there and take the slap. You yeah. can't, there's no clinching, no defending. And you can't like, uh, you God. can't try to move your head. No, yeah, you previous. can't move. You can't like try right, to you get disqualified. Beat it by, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you still get the hit if you, so you have, really have to take it, right? <laughs> yeah. Look at this. Dude, it's awesome. You know what amazes me too? It. When some of these guys get slapped, they go cock stiff. They, you know, they yeah. do that lock up where, yeah, where the hands go up, yeah. right? And then they're just on the floor like this. <laughs> I just like, I don't understand this sport. But you know what? It's to me, it's like anything else where. I remember someone saying, I think my dad was saying something. He was like, MMA is, I, I, well, because when it was, you know, the original cage fighting, when the I very remember, first version. You remember the very first ones? Yeah. It and my was dad's like, like this They get a wrestler, crazy. who like an all-star wrestler, yeah. to I, fight like yeah. a jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy. Right. And then they didn't have, the only rule was no eyes. No nuts. No, ni- no, no eyes, no nuts. But no they, nuts. you could, I remember there was a, a an Asian guy who had on a red, like a Speedo. Right. And. Somehow was in a, in with this other like six hundred pound guy or whatever, and just was punching him in the ding a lot. What? Yeah, just punching him, smoking it. And and I was like, I guess that's as long as you didn't hit the eyes. That was the only rule. I think. Yeah, I guess. Well, these are my eyes downstairs. <laughs> I need my eyes down below. Don't pull on those yeah, things. Yeah, I got cat whiskers on this thing. So I, that's how I, that's how I find my way in the dark. You, you got know? your feelers out. Yeah, exactly. In here. We pour whiskey, whiskey. This episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by Rabbit Hole Distillery and their one-of-a-kind Kentucky bourbon and rye whiskeys. Hey, I've been talking about this sauce for a long, long time. Behind Rabbit Hole's award-winning spirits is the story of their founder, Kaveh Zamanian. This cat left a 20-plus year career as a psychologist, went down the rabbit hole, went digging with the mission of craft world's finest spirits and that he did he was the uh he was just inducted into the kentucky bourbon hall of fame fastest to ever get inducted congrats if you're looking for something truly original i gotta tell you 
This stuff is delicious. They have four different expressions. Uh, I've been sip sapping on this one. The Derringer is muy bueno, okay? It's uh, finished in uh, Pedro Jimenez sherry casks. And yeah, you got to say it like that. That's the only way to get it done. They've also got the Boxer Grail Sour Mash Rye, the High Gold High Rye Double Malt Bourbon, and the OG Cave Hill Four Grain Triple Malt Bourbon. Listen to that sound as she sloshes around in there. Uh, such good stuff. High quality stuff. And it's also... Uh, only pulling from 15 barrels at a time, okay? A lot of people say they're small batches. They're not. They're pulling from all over the place. These guys are doing it the right way over at Rabbit Hole. Uh, I really like it. Uh, a genuinely delicious, wonderful for the price point that they're at. A lot of stuff is overpriced these days because of hype. I don't buy into it. Get something that's worth its weight in taste, my friend. If you're looking for something truly original, Rabbit Hole is a perfect gift for yourself or for someone you love. They got four different uh, expressions. To go find more, uh, go to rabbitholedistillery.com slash buy now. Rabbitholedistillery.com slash buy now. Use promo code RAPID for $5 off your first order. Drink responsibly. This episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace. I have talked so much uh, about Squarespace. That's because I use them and I like them. I really, really do enjoy what they're doing uh, in the space of creating your own site. Okay? Um, you got to... You, if you're looking to sell something... Uh, whether you're, you know, uh, a personal trainer or you're an artist or you're a creator or you just want to yell at the void that is the internet, you got to use them. Um, they have custom merch. If you're selling merch on there, you can uh, sell custom merch, create a passive income stream that engages your audience and scales your brand. A great online store. Um, flexible website templates, which is the best part about creating a site on Squarespace is they have stuff for you. But if you want to go rogue and do it on your own, do it on your own. Okay? Just do it on your own. But I like to use a template because they're designed by professionals. Uh, and my favorite part about uh, about what they offer beyond like the blogging tools and these templates and the Fluid Engine is the analytics. You can use insights uh, to grow your business, learn where your site visits and clicks and sales are coming from, analyze which channels are the most effective and improve your website, build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords and most popular products and content. This way you know where your clicks are coming from. That's what I use to know where you guys are uh, so I can come play live for you. Hey, go to squarespace.com for a free trial when you're ready to launch. Go to squarespace.com slash whiskey to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Once again, squarespace.com. Check it out. Then are you ready to launch your website? Go to squarespace.com slash whiskey to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Ginger. I like gingers. Yeah, no, I remember my dad saying, though, he was like, I don't think that's going to really make an impact. And I was like, well, who knows? And sure enough, it, it, I don't know. I couldn't know. I mean, it's obviously not as big as football. But, but I mean, it's just such a huge sport now. It's shocking to think how tiny that was. So maybe this turns into something bigger. Who knows? I just don't think you're going to get enough people. Well, it's not as dynamic, of course. Mixed martial arts is so much more dynamic. Yeah. Because but your this career, still be like, like getting behind an athlete in this. Athlete, yeah. Athlete, athlete I'm being very yeah. generous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting behind, uh, let's call him a fighter, or yeah. a slapper. Getting behind a slapper is tough to do because they're not going to be around that long. No, I, they're I, in I wouldn't think. They're in and out. What did that say? The reward, how much money do they make? You know, the what, 10 grand, 30 grand being <sighs> the highest? What is this? Uh, UFC. UFC. Oh, well, UFC is much, much higher. Yeah, yeah, three million. Yeah, if I, I well, I mean, it's so much harder to compare because it, it, there's no money in it. Yeah, but we t I had this discussion the other day. Like, you and I, both big golfers. Yeah. And what's crazy is how some guys that are on the tour doing well are still not, you know, m weren't making a lot of money until very recently. The rules are changing. The times are changing. Mm -hmm. But it's crazy to think you're a pro. You're one of the top you know, 50 in the world. But if you're having a bad year, you're not making money. No. It's that, crazy to it, me. It doesn't, because every other major league sport, every other professional sport, there is some sort of salary guarantee. Well, you're there's, given a guarantee. Yeah, yeah. there's a, there's a yeah. base that you can count on. Right. To at least, you know, fund whatever life you... Sure. You know, and then, any, you know, let's say you have a great year, great. You get you reap the benefits of right. that. But, but they're the only ones who have to get throw their bag in the car and go to the next tournament if they don't make the cut. Tough. And the, and, and the caddy life, the living with the caddy life. As I, I said that last night with my cousin. We were watching uh, the Worldwide Golf replay. And uh, I said, this is what's interesting about golf. And not that I'm trying to crack the tradition, but yeah. the athlete doesn't have to carry the bag, right? Yeah. So what I'm confused with is, why does some other idiot have to carry the bag? <laughs> We can't just put that on a thing, and you know what I mean. Like, like yeah, just why a, does he have to physically? I don't understand that because the labor of it doesn't affect the athlete's performance. I think. Well, I think what it is, in my humble opinion, and I don't know, but guessing, 
is that golf is such an individual sport that the only it's like a boxer in the ring they got to fight but they go back to their corner to get sure. get a, a third a, a perspective an outside view of what's happening or whatever yeah and that caddy is more than just carrying the bag i think he's also a confidant someone who calms them down someone who gives them advice someone who backs up his decision yeah you know that that no i agree his i think quarter man so but i'm speak. saying what you're saying is you need to have that guy, but yeah. why does he have to carry the bag? Oh, yeah, why does he have to yeah. lug an eighty pound? Yeah, bag? I never got that. Like that. that no, to you're me, absolutely right on that. Like, like, why not put it on a on a on a pushy trolley or? Yeah, or because a, if, if, because I understand if the athlete rules was well, the athlete has to do this yeah. uh, during competition. I totally understand that. Yeah. But if it's the onus isn't on you to carry your own shit. I couldn't agree more. Then it's they just weird. Did, like let, let it's those things like uh, before Liv came along. Yeah. Everybody just accepted the paradigm of the PGA. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. There, that's it. And there's no debating it. And that's it. Yeah. Then Liv comes along and now all the rules have changed because the paradigm is now, well, we got to pay our people. We got to do this. We got to do that. Things can be different. Well, I'm a big exactly. Liv guy. I mean, I don't know if you know, Thanks. but I, I'm a big, I'm, I'm big into it. I'm, fr I played in the pro-am. I'm friends with those guys now. Yeah. And I'm a big proponent of like, comp I like competition. It's just We're in the same boat. We're, we're from the same club. Yeah. I, I think the PGA, uh, who I respect and I respect tradition and all that stuff, but I, I think they got caught with their pants down. I think they just totally. got used to being this dinosaur who's like, this is how it is. We're this monolith. And and when the competition came, they didn't know how to respond. No. They got caught with their pants down. 100%. And, and sorry, but we do live in a world of competition. And if I can make a better widget than you, then I should be able to come to market. Then check out my widget. Then check out my Take widget. Take a look at my widget, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. It does feel that way to me. I just feel like they're, the times they are changing. And so many other sports have shifted the way that the game is played, why would golf is so slow to do it? But it, you know, if you're and a the hockey market fan, will bear too. The market will bear. Like, let's say Liv comes to the table and says, "I think I got a better widget." Right? Well, if if no one goes to see, no one likes them, no one responds, they don't have any name talent. They don't. Well, the market will bear that, and they right. will fail. And right. then if that happens, okay, you know, but, At least but you took but, a but shot. If, exactly. But yeah. if the market says no, actually, we we enjoy this. We enjoy this competition. We enjoy a new flavor. We enjoy yeah. a different kind of competition. Well, guess what? They they got the little chunk of your market share. Yeah, I I, th I think so. I, every sport is changing over time. I don't know why this one wouldn't. And the, the ever long debate, which I want to hear your side of it, is with my dad because he's old school. He thinks shorts are bullshit. He's always like, guys shouldn't <laughs> wear shorts on the golf course. And I said, we wear shorts when we play. Yeah. He's like, I'm yeah. not a pro. I was like, okay. All I right. will say this in a weird way. I'm kind of with your dad. In I get it. In a weird way, I, I like col I like college players wearing shorts. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I don't mind amateurs. I think shorts is wonderful. I just feel like it is the only signature thing that a pro can do to say, "I'm a pro." I'm a pro. Is Swe I, sweat? I, I play in sweat. I play I in slacks. Yeah, I, I sweat. play in slacks. That's my thing, though. It's just, it's like it's kind of like how the NBA at some point, all these athletes were like. Do does our penis have to fall out of the bottom of these shorts, or could we have longer shorts? And the NBA was like, okay, I guess we can make this more comfortable for you. Fine, give them the long shorts. Well, because there were Daisy Dukes, and oh, it was they like, were. I mean, you know that the players were like, yeah. this is very uncomfortable. Yeah, and they were finally like, yeah, I guess if it's affecting your performance, we should make it to the best of your ability. Yeah. So then they finally started to change. That's what I'm saying is like, if it's 90, and those guys are doing a tour in South Florida. Mm -hmm. Why can't they wear shorts? I just don't get it. I don't know. And have you seen some of these guys' calves? You know, Phil. Oh, delicious calves! This guy's <laughs> dude, meat hawks. They're that monsters. Guy, man. They're awesome. Yeah, show them off. So but, the but talking about change, right? And talking yeah. about evolution. The so you know soccer over the Premier League or whatever they have the you you they have all kinds of cups. They have a sure they have yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the FIFA World Cup. They have the. Uh, Champions Cup, they have the UFA, whatever. They have all these different cups, and they have a season that yep. the, they play out, right? right? Right. So, and then within the season, they they have the, another that they they do the side thing, a little side hustle, yeah, a little side where they, hustle, where they try to win this other cup and all this stuff. And so it's really interesting because they grab all the all stars from everybody and they do all this stuff, and it's 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 interesting. And now it looks like the NBA. Have you seen this? No. The NBA, it looks like if I saw the, I saw an ad, it looked like, but basically they're going to do some sort of mid-season thing where the, they grab the best players and they compete for a cup. Oh wow! So not only do you have them playing for their cities and the da da da, just like soccer, now they're going to play for uh, like some Champions Cup. Oh, that's of really basketball, cool. and it's going to be this global thing. I, I guess. like that. An so, but to me, tournament? that's the evolution and the right. way they keep keep it going. What? Yeah, in-season in -season tournament, tournament, right there. Well, you might as well you might as well keep things moving because 
you know, uh, I do think, you know, this sounds old school, but there is not a lot of allegiance anymore to a city or a team. A lot of guys just want to, you know, become the 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 Avengers of a team and then win everything, which mm-hmm. is the ultimate goal, right? But mm-hmm. And if that's the case, then it's like, well, then we might as well. Because, like, for football, soccer players, they, those guys jump around to wherever it works. Yeah. And it used to be like, you know, when I was a kid, Kevin Garnett played in Minnesota, sadly, <laughs> for far too long. And then he got his comeuppance when he finally left. But he had allegiance to that city for a long time. And guys, but there was always something special. I don't know. Guys don't really do that anymore. No, they don't. Like, I, I remember George Brett, with the, he stayed with the Royals his entire career. Yeah, man. You know, 76 to 90. And, and I remember... Or to ninety two, but I remember, uh, uh, you know, and and I feel bad for like uh, Barry Sanders, right? You know, yeah. he, he, great, one of the greatest of all time, stuck in Detroit, couldn't get anywhere. I know you want him anything. to move, right? You want him to move, right? Yeah. So I don't know when LeBron started that super team thing down in Miami. You know, well, that was the beginning of all of it, really. Yeah, I mean, that was like it really a, was cracking the egg of everyone. And I don't know what's do right. It. I don't know what's right because in baseball, there's no salary cap. Like I remember, I remember at one time, a Rod, his yearly salary was equivalent to the entire Royals starting lineup. <laughs> that sounds right. Yeah. You know, it really yeah. was. I remember because it was we just yeah. used to laugh about it. You yeah. know, we're like, well, how are we supposed to compete? You, you know? can't. No, you can't. So that, then when you have leagues that do have these sour caps, well, you see some parity. You know, sure. like the if you're if you're at the bottom right now in the NFL, give it about five years, you'll you'll be back. You'll be in the playoffs. <laughs> you say that, but we're the Bears. <laughs> you say that, but we're the Bears. <laughs> well, if you have We've a, given if, it a lot of you, years, man. If you pick right, if you pick oh, okay, right, yeah, you got to no, pick I know, right. But I you know. still have a you still have a puncher's chance because even if you say at the bottom longer, you just keep like the Browns right now have like their starting lineup has got like eleven uh, between the offense and defense. They got like eleven number one picks, and they still can't get it. Done. And they <laughs> and they still can't get it done. No, it's true, but it's true. I still always hold out hope because because that is uh, the NFL still does have that hopeful underdog yeah. th- thing i don't it's harder to see in other sports i think hopeful underdog in like the nba is yeah. and i'm a, a lost see, and i always wrestle with this because i'm a capitalist so i'm like what the market will bear the market will bear right that, and yeah. if you've got the money to get that talent get that talent or whatever but then i'm like yeah but then it makes the league really hard you know because right. you're just it's always going to be the same five teams competing for the trophy you well know? i've got a suggestion you tell me if this is wackadoo nonsense oh boy so you put almost like i already like it by almost the way. like fantasy right you put everyone in a slotted uh numerical position of what would be their financial worth is now slotted into a numerical worth the example i would give is my dad does a charity golf tournament and uh when we do a golf tournament uh not charity. What am I? We do charity. Yeah. We do a golf tournament every year, and um, you're a number, an A player, a B player, or a C player. And each team gets one A, and then you get yeah. two B and two or three C, right? Right. So I, you would do that with NBA players. Everyone's in a bucket. It's kind of a quality control. Yes, and at the beginning yeah. of the year, you get randomly selected, and let's see what you do with that team. Because if we're not going to have any allegiance to cities anyway, yeah. well, then then anybody gets a chance to have the best squad for the year. Mm-hmm. And and let's say that goes on for like a two-year gap. So for a year or two, you play for that same team, and then you get back in the shuffle again. It'd be kind of fun to see. That's an interesting concept. Because you're, and then your financial worth is based on what it was before. You were an A player anyway. Yeah. We determined that when you came into the league. That's how you were how can, drafted. Can players go from C to B to A? Can you, I mean. Yeah, you certainly, you can bump up at the end of the year. Much if, like if your a, numbers are tremendous. Well, much like any good ball player. If you had a great year, yeah. the next year, you're going to use that option, if you have it, to either say, hey, I want a couple more bucks. I, or I, want, gonna... I want to make sure the players stay incentivized. Totally. You know? And so yeah. if, if their play is good, which, you know, then, well, they then get, you get it. Then you're going to get reap bumped. those rewards. Yeah. yeah. And you're going to get bumped to the next league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because honestly, I just think, like, if there is not going to be allegiance to cities, it's very tough in the NBA, specifically the NBA. Yeah. Then why wouldn't it be more of a randomization and a fun? It's almost like we're watching different little Olympic squads come together. You know, when the Olympic team comes together, you're like, what do you call? Shit. What do you call this plan? Do you, do you have a name for it yet? The San Riggle, the Santino Riggle thing. Right, well, let's just, just real quick on air. We're gonna uh, yeah. copyright trademark. Yeah, we have to. We have to. <laughs> we have to trademark it. Please get on that. Will you email the? Yeah, the cap- please. Thank you. No, I just feel like there's something to be. It would because make this it, is this is a fun concept. It's fun. It's different. It's weird because nowadays, I grew up in the dominant monopolization of basketball in Chicago with Jordan. Yeah, and it and because it was mine. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, you loved it. You had a great childhood. Right, right. <laughs> but for other squads, I'm sure it was just it was kind of lame for so long that yeah. he had created one of the most dominant teams of all time. Yeah. 
So I think it'd be fun to see them switch. But there's special, though, because... But that know, only happens once in a lifetime, man. I yeah, mean, that's and, once and, in a great, and, great And while. his, you know, he was a special individual. Totally. You know, his work ethic, his his demand of his teammates. Yes. And, you know, like, he created that. He totally. built it, created it, and it, and it was his special skills and his leadership, whether you liked it or not, it's still leadership. But let me see what he does with a bunch of different B and C guys. Yeah. Let me see what Jordan does the next year with... You know, a, a totally different lineup. I think there's yeah. something like I want to see Let's Jordan, see Reggie and, Miller, and Isaiah Thomas, and yeah. and Bird, and what all those A's did with new new B's. That would be so cool yeah, to watch. Yeah, yeah. I want to watch Stockton and Jordan. Would be wild to watch them two together. Yeah. You know, and the only time we ever got to do that was '92, the Dream Team. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So why don't we make every every year or two? Maybe you get two years of this team, and I'm pitching it. You're you're hearing me. Uh, uh, you got to try this out. We got to figure out a way because the only way they'll implement it is if it, they do it on a minor league level and it works. Well, you could do it in the G League. You could do it in the G League and yeah. see how that works in the G League. And 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 if it works in the NBA's, I think you just created league. something amazing. I know. I know. Do by the way, NBA. If you steal this idea, what are you looking up? Oh yeah. The oh, it's on record. Adam We're... Silver. Yeah, Adam. Adam. <laughs> Adam is a big fan of this show. Adam, if you're listening, Adam Silver. Yeah. If you're if you're out there listening carefully to this we're show, not a, we're not asking questions. I, I have no claim to this, but I will say well, I'll I let you I, in. You're I here. want I want in. On, I just want a suite. I, I want to be in the suite with you. You heard it, Adam. Please, with, Mr. And with Silver. food service and liquor, <laughs> yeah, yeah. top shelf liquor. <laughs> Dude, isn't that funny? When you get invited to these suites at athletic performances or yeah. whatever, yeah. and if you get into one of these suites, like, you know, they're amazing to yeah. get into one of them. But sometimes you go to one that doesn't have food or booze, yeah. and you're like, oh, or just, man. Or some nasty-ass chicken fingers. Yeah, you're like, this is bad it. sauce. I'm like, what? This is all you got? I, and then I'm like, well, I'll, I'll roll the dice out of concessions. Yeah, I'm going to concessions every time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if there's only like one thing, and they're like, "You guys have, you guys get Mick Ultra and chicken wings." I'm yeah. like, "I'll go back to concessions." And, and a, a thing of popcorn that everybody's been finger banging. Yeah, no, thank yeah, you. I'm no, like, thank oh, you. God, nah, damn, the pokies. Gotta, no, thank you. I'll take. I'll roll the dice at concessions. That's, that's the time. so that's the proposition, uh, Mr. Silver, Mr. Adam Silver. Yeah. I, if you want a business with us, you know how to contact us. You know yeah. how to get a hold of us and get it's the Kings hard. back to Kansas City. No one's watching them in Sacramento. Get the Kings back to Kansas City. Yeah, that's, why not? Seriously, we want them. We 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 want them back. You they do. should have never left. And the Sacramento doesn't give a shit about the Kings. No, you know what's so funny is we're playing a show in Sacramento next year, but we're playing a place called like Wheatland, or something. Yeah. And most of the time, if I misquote it online, if I say we're playing Sacramento, someone goes, "You're actually playing Wheatland," <laughs> but Sacramento doesn't give a shit. They're like, "Yeah, man, it's all Sacramento. Whatever. We're what? It's don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. I don't even know what it's called. Yeah, Sacramento. What is that? The Hard Rock. Click on the thing. I think it's called Wheatland. Is the name of the area." But it is funny. Some cities get real sensitive. Like, you guys have this in spades because, you know, I've talked to you about this. I went to college with a lot of Kansas City guys, which is yeah. why I have this weird connection to Kansas City because yeah. a bunch of my boys were from uh, Overland Park and yeah. all over, all yeah, over yeah, the place. Yeah. But, uh, which is where I'm from, Overland Park. Oh, you, are you really? Oh, yeah. that's wild. Yeah. Um, and uh, Park Hill South is where someone went yep. to high school. and that's where Stone Street. He's from Park Hill area up north. Oh, really? It's in North Kansas City. Yeah, that's, some of those guys went yeah. there. But so I have this weird affinity to them, but they take it, Midwest people know, Kansas City takes it real, real serious <laughs> if you're Kansas side, Missouri side. That's like a big, because well, no one really and knows. And I'm so specific, too, because the, the simple truth is, like, Kansas City, Missouri, and Kansas City, Kansas – uh, you know, it's split down the middle. Yeah. Um, and 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 so a lot of people get confused by which is which. Sure. Uh, Kansas City, Kansas has a lot of industrial, you know, area, mm -hmm. and and Kansas City, Missouri has the downtown skyline, and they have the Truman Sports Complex, yeah. and they have a lot of the goodies, right? <laughs> I and see so, what you're doing. And so, uh, but now we've built up a lot of stuff out on the Kansas side. With the racetrack and right. the You've soccer team, soccer field, right? Yeah, yeah. That's right. so so you know we're we're it's it's a balancing act or whatever. But <laughs> I I do tell when people say where are you from, I say I'm from Overland Park, Kansas. I'm very specific. You let them know. Yes, yeah, that because it is a kind of a big point of contention of people that I know from the area that, it, but but what doesn't matter, no matter which side you're from. You're still a Kansas City sports fan. Yes. So that division doesn't matter. No. That's what's interesting. Yeah. Right? There's like, no division there. We're all. We're all red, right? You're all yeah, right. That that I think is kind of powerful. Yeah. That's a cool. Th that's kind of like for me growing up in Chicago. I don't give a shit what part of Wisconsin you're from. They're lunatics <laughs> about Green Bay. Do you know what I mean? Like that's all they got. I know, but it's just it's so big to them. Yeah. And Chicago is such a mixed bag that there's probably people from other parts of the country that are like maybe Bears fans, maybe yeah. not. But if you live in Wisconsin, I don't care if you're from Massachusetts. You could be from New York City. Yeah. You move to Wisconsin, you become a diehard. That's the one thing I. Or credit you move them. back out. 
Yeah, right, right. It's or a you, real quick choice. Or, you leave. <laughs> or they or they beat you up and yeah. you leave. Or they man. run you out of the yeah, state. Yeah, you don't have a choice. So you, being a golf fan, you'll appreciate this. So I, I, I was lucky enough to play in the uh, Ryder Cup up in Whistling Straits. Oh, and my partner, beautiful. because they knew it was in Wisconsin or whatever, you right. know, my partner was A.J. Hawk. Whoa! And, and I mean the crowd. It was a massive crowd, you know, uh, gallery. And uh, and it's it, it's it's just a little celebrity match or whatever. It's uh, some European celebrities against some American celebrities or whatever. Sure. And it's just a little two man scramble, like nine holes or whatever. But it was a lot of fun. But those fans were going so nuts for AJ man. Oh they, man, they, yeah, they, absurd. I mean, he, it didn't matter what he did. They're like AJ, but they're ripping their hair. You know, they're like God, they couldn't Tearing get enough. their hair out. <laughs> yeah, this That's, is for you. Yeah, dude. do see what I did. I love you, AJ. Is he a good golfer? He, he yes. Well, he probably beats the shit out of the ball. There's no he, doubt. He clubs that thing. It's so funny to watch His swing athletes is so, hit it. So violent. It's yeah. so violent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. going three bills every time. It, now, it might not go straight. Yeah, exactly. But it's going three bills. Yeah, every sometimes time. over there, but also very far. Yeah. <laughs> but when he did rope it right down the middle, it is insane to watch. Yeah. When they do hit it like that, it's almost you're. You do see how, why God made them different. Yeah. When you see a pro athlete pl uh, play a sport that's not their own, you're like, oh, my God, you are made completely uniquely different than me. I, I You and I have both been around professional athletes, and, and you're 100% right. Yeah. It's, I don't know, I don't know how, what, if it was Zeus, I don't know who blessed them <laughs> or touched them at birth right. and granted them the gifts that they Something have. But their, there, their bones are bigger, their muscles, their tendons. Everything about them, even their mindset, is yeah. is competition, competition. Well, competition. this thing is the most unique part about it because I see guys that do other sports that they don't play, yeah. and the way they think about these sports, the way that they that they're competitive, and even in that, you're like, oh man, you're just you just know how to like dissect comp competitive things better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. Like you really have different vision over a game because and you know it's how a to, game. They break you know it how down. to focus, when to focus, you yeah. know when to. And their focus goes from it goes from nothing to hyper right away. Yeah, yeah. There's no middle ground. You know. Meanwhile, me and a couple of these, and I'm just like, whatever happens. Yeah, I'm happens. taking selfies. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, whatever. We're out here partying. <laughs> that is true, man. They they just take it to a totally different level. But yeah. those proams are kind of the coolest thing to see. Uh, different people excel even at that at that game. Like, I went and did Steph Curry's a couple of years ago in Stanford. And, you know, everyone brags that Steph's a good golfer, yeah. but he's also just, he's just got the swag of an athlete. There's something that they all have. He has the swagger. He could eat a sandwich. You'd be like, holy shit, the way he eats that God sandwich. Damn, that's the best I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, they're just good at that. Yeah. I don't know. They're better at you than all. Like, I'd be <laughs> spilling on my shirt. Steph, like, wipe it. It's just There's something about it. There's lettuce in my beard yeah. somehow. Yeah. Do I look into ridiculous? Yeah, you look like an idiot. <laughs> No, they're very fun. They're they're super fun. I get. Do you get nervous in those things? I get a little nervous. Always. I'm oh my god. Nervous, and my man. my grip pressure goes through the roof. Even yeah. though I tell myself to calm down, I say swing easy. I swing hard. Hard as you can. Yeah. It's it's just a you know we we're not as conditioned for, the, like, uh, you know it's funny too because I hear athletes say oh, I could never do what you do you know and yeah you, you could probably I'm like yeah. yeah of course you could <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. with enough. But uh, they are very used to athletic performance in front of people. Mm -hmm. You know, our games weren't meant to be put on display. No. They're for us no, and our just, friends. It's our little secret. It's my <laughs> exactly. little tiny secret. So when you when you have to put our, our games on display in front of, you know, galleries and people. And yeah. Yeah, everything everything gets heightened and all that anxiety comes it in. It comes through. Not to and get... golf manifests all your... Whatever you're feeling that day, if you're angry when you get to the course, if you're rushed, if you are preoccupied with a uh, fight with your girl or this or that or any it all comes to the golf course it's yep. not like you put it on the shelf or, yeah. and it's not like you can use it like in football you could use it to take that anger that frustration that anxiety and you could pound someone or yeah. you know run hard or get it out of your body in golf it just stays inside you and manifests in your shitty play exactly right <laughs> Yes, yeah, so you're like, what'd you, shoot, what'd you shoot today? You shouldn't say a number. You should be like, I'll tell you what I shot. I got in a fight with my wife this morning. Uh, and my, exactly. car, my, my car needs to be uh, yeah. gone. To get taken the back front, in for the fourth time. The, the front nine was me dealing with my fucking manager. Yeah, exactly the right. The back yeah. nine was me de <laughs> dealing with you my girl. You want to know how I played? <laughs> you want to ask my kids how I played today? You know? Uh, that, that is so true. Because you had a full fight with them and nobody knew about it. Uh -huh. Just you. And manifests right there. Yeah, that is true. It all—all all that kind of comes uh, in the way that we don't know how to deal deal with it like they do. Yeah, I want to know your opinion, and you don't have to go too deep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
but because I can't avoid it, unfortunately, being a KC guy <laughs> and our boy Travis with uh, with his Taylor Swift thing. Yeah. It, now, do KC fans are they like over this whole nonsense? Of uh, it? Yeah, I think uh, in a way. And, and when I say over it, I, I don't mean like they're over them. No, just the public publication, just the, of just it. the yeah. constant hype. Yeah, and, it's so and, much. and like a, ta- a Taylor check in, you know, all the time. Why do they do? Why are the NFL her, doing that? You know, she's 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 his girlfriend. They're they're boyfriend girlfriend, or they're they're dating, or whatever they're doing. They're enjoying it. You know, yeah. Like, it is what it is. It comes with being high profile. It just comes with. I know, being but high it's so profile. funny that the NFL is utilizing this to to, to really win bank. Win girl yeah. fans. Yeah, to win all those Swifties. Man. I know it is. Very, yeah. They are. They knew where the money was. They yeah. were like, dude, put the camera up there. Make one of these guys talk about it at least at least once every other break. <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, it's just it's a very. They big, always have to mention it. They do. They, if they they yeah. always have to mention if she's at the game or not. Now I know it's so funny. You know, like when they're in Germany, last you know they were they're like, uh, well, she's not here. Yeah, and so. Taylor is not here today. Uh, we will be missing her in the stands. <laughs> and she's very good at this. Yeah. but She with- played the stadium seven times, actually, four years ago. These boys can only sell out one. In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. You smell that? Whiskey. It's me, and I smell clean. You want to smell clean all the time, but especially on Valentine's Day. You want to smell better when you're butt naked on the V-Day, spread out over a bed of flowers and money and chocolate. Guys, we want to be prepared for that moment at all times. Uh, you don't want your junk to be smelling like funk. It can ruin what's to come. Huh? That's why I'm excited for today's sponsor, Mando. Mando Whole Body Deodorant is designed to tackle odor wherever it springs up. Put it on your pits, package, and feet, everywhere in between. Mando's long-lasting, clinically proven formula controls odor for up to 72 hours, while the cologne quality scents will make you irresistible to anyone within smelling distance. Make sure that you switch to Mando and smell great all day and all night and the next morning. I put some of this Mando uh, underneath my uh, chichones, my chicharrones. I put it down there, and my God, it did smell good. It lasted uh, much longer than traditional body lotions or sprays or whatever else they got going on out there in the world. It's created by a doctor. Saw firsthand that B.O. was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. Mando whole body deodorant is powerful enough for the toughest body odor, gentle enough to use everywhere. All right, aluminum-free, bacon soda-free, cruelty-free, dye-free, vegan. Come on, man. You got to try this out. It's so much better than the other grunk that's out there. Yeah, grunk. Crap, grunk, chunk, crud, whatever you want to call it. Mando Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. Luckily, I got a discount code to help you get hooked on my favorite smelling whole body deodorant in the market. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack. Come on, man. Use that code whiskey at shopmando.com. That's shopmando.com, S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O.com. It's time to smell better. Naked, your partner gonna thank you. Valentine's Day is right around the corner, and you need to be ready when Cupid strikes with our friends at Joy Mode. Whether you're looking to get lucky or spice up those intimate moments with your partner Joy Mode Sexual Performance Booster, that Sexual Performance Booster, it's an all-natural science-backed solution to every man's greatest fear, releasing the love too soon. You don't want to jump the gate. Come on, man. Sit back. Relax. It's Valentine's Day. Move on from sketchy gas station erection pills and treat yourself to a supplement you can actually trust. No prescription needed. Simply mix six to eight ounces of water 45 minutes before sexual activity. Watch the love unfold. Literally, watch it. Watch it grow, baby. Date night will never be the same when you go uh, to usejoymode.com. Usejoymode.com for 20% off with code whiskey. That's 20% off and free shipping with code whiskey at usejoymode.com. Elevate your confidence and performance in the bedroom because the best gift you can give her this Valentine's Day is Joy Mode for yourself. I don't know about you, but uh, I'm never going to go back on prescription drugs after trying Joy Mode, okay? A little bit of something gives you a lot of bit of something. It's designed to support erection quality, firmness, and sex drive. Get it pumping, baby. Fire on all cylinders, all right? It contains clinically supported doses of uh, arginine nitrate, uh, Panax ginseng, vitamin C. It's a supplement that's good for the bedroom and also supports blood vessel support, cardiovascular and heart health, athletic performance, and blood pressure. All right? Do yourself a favor. Go to usejoymode.com for 20% off with that code whiskey. Do it now. Ginger. I like gingers. That was an interesting game to see in Germany, by the way. That's what my wife said that she watched me came down came came out and watched me watching the game and she goes, Do people in Germany like football? I was like, Yeah, well, yes. People like football everywhere, but I do understand what she's saying of yeah. like, 
that would be I got why she was like why is it there I'm like well they're trying to expand their audience and, and why are the Germans embracing like a Kansas City team well because, they pick teams you see those yes, guys in Europe they do. you'll see a guy with like a Dallas shirt on and you're yeah. like oh that's kind of wild he they have no connect I asked a guy one time I was in Venice Italy uh for a super <laughs> during a Super Bowl probably 15 years ago yeah. I I it was I was in college or yeah 7 18 years ago and uh I'll never forget I w- we found a bar a pub yeah. that was open after hours because the time difference yeah. and the Super Bowl was playing and uh I, guys had different shirts on or were cheering and and there were teams that obviously weren't represented and I was like how did you become yeah. that fan yeah. you know a New York Giants yeah. and they had they always had like kind of a elongated version of like well a friend of mine went to New York one time 10 years ago <laughs> yeah. said it was the most fun he ever had yeah, yeah. and he saw a game and then now I like it or they pick one player from it's not even usually a current player. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, you know, the, like again, they'll be like Barry Sanders yeah. is why I like the line, and you're like, wow, that's fucking amazing. Yeah. And I think the Chiefs right now have such a a, a fun roster. Oh yeah. And they're man. doing fun things like yeah. winning and dating famous people. Winning, yeah. Winning. So uh, that winning helps. Yeah. But you know, the Chiefs fans at that at that game in Germany, it was like a home game. Yeah, it did feel. But they also had this the same kind of intensity that. American fans have they have because you forget the way that they treat football soccer Mm -hmm. is how we treat football football yeah but except I I would argue they're way more intense than we are and I and I can see how this happens because on the reverse side of that like I know nothing about the Premier League you know I mean I know some names right and old names like Beckham and you know things like that yeah yeah yeah. but but and I have a, a, a cursory understanding of Premier League soccer sure but I shared an office with John Oliver when I was at the Daily Show right he's the best man and so. I educated him on American football, and he educated me on the Premier oh, League. Oh, that's cool. And then he's like, so I'm a Liverpool man. So I was like, well, I guess I am too. So that's how I right, became so a Liverpool. Right, you're Liverpool, exactly. Yeah. Right. And, but I have no other allegiance other than John introduced me to Liverpool and made me a believer. Because, cool. you know, he's a good propagandist with that, you know. He's and I made good. him believe in the Chiefs a lot, but then he rejected him at the last minute and went with the Giants, so fuck him. Well, because, you know what, honestly, He lives in New York. Yeah, he lives, lives in New York. That's it. But even still, you took up Liverpool. John, what's your deal, bud? Yeah. Give us a call. Yeah. I, you know, I get, reach out. I, yeah, come on. Some, this is some serious bullshit. Well, because your allegiance comes from like that happens too with like my dad likes stuff, and I just like it because of him. Like I don't. He went to University of Tennessee. I don't have any allegiance to Tennessee, yeah. but I support him and I like it. Yeah, because it's his. Yeah. So if it's like if someone you love supports it, you're like, I guess I'm gonna do it too. Right. And if there's no harm, no foul, I'll get on board. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Right. As yeah. long as it's not. Uh... So like right here in L.A., I live in L.A. My kids are, are being raised in L.A., but I'm a Kansas City through and through guy right so it's royals it's it's chiefs you know i went to ku so i'm a jayhawk right like, these are just my things right and for the most part the kids have not had a choice but i, I said yeah. listen you're growing up in la you can have the lakers you can have the kings you know uh Clippers. And, and, and you i'll get on board with the dodgers because they're national league that's right and as long as you know unless it's the world series uh, and they're playing the Royals, you know, I'm going to go, but I'll, I'll get on board. I'll wear a Dodgers hat. I'll go out there sure. and play with you and, and let you have the Dodgers. And are they, do- are they LA they fans? Do. They do appreciate uh, having some Dodger, having some LA locals right. that they can get on board with. It's, we, it's, we move here. I, you know, I've been here for so long too. It's like, what am I going to do? Not go support local sports. Yeah. I can't see my team. Yeah. And I, when I do see them, yeah. they get romped when they come here. <laughs> so, uh, you know. Whatever, it's fine. You know, it's like uh, I, I, I had no problem. It's tough for me as a Cubs fan because the Cubs Dodgers uh, headbutting that we did during our little our little triumphant year. But outside of that, yeah, man, I'm a local fan yeah. of a lot of sports because I you I live here. What do you want me to What do you want me? To I do? won't go see the Angels. Uh, I mean, I'll go to a game if they're playing the Royals. I've been down but there I, once, but I but they're American League, and yeah. I, I can't do it. You know, I'm a. I also don't want to go down there. <laughs> I don't. It's just too far. I well, don't, and the good thing too, like the the Chargers uh, are now L.A., so I get to see the Chiefs at least once a year. That's true. Yeah, that's when the, nice when they come to town. Yeah, and and then the Raiders are right there in Vegas, and so they're playing in Vegas once a year. So there, uh, there's a couple games. Where yeah, that's happening. Have Vegas you been close. to Have you been to Vegas to that stadium? Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's unbelievable. Gorgeous. Yeah, that is that's that's the one thing I'm hoping for that continues. I mean, you too, by the way, you guys, because Arrowhead is. Uh, Show, showing her age spots. I, well, I think we're the oldest stadium left in the NFL. You got to be right, because now that yeah. Oakland's gone, mm-hmm. you guys got to be it, right? Yeah, and and we were built in '72. Well, no, Soldier Field, we're still the oldest. Seventy. But you know, the irony is, we don't own that place. No, no, but you have a new field. Soldier Field has a new field. Uh, it's got a, it had a, it had a upgrade to the it had a facelift. 
It was just a facelift. It wasn't a whole thing. No, just a facelift. Like they uh, Lambo too. Lambo is one of the old boys. Yeah, that's right. And there you are, Arrowhead number three. Yeah, uh, seventy-two. Lambo. Yeah, well, I can't believe we skipped over. But that. here's the thing: like Kansas City, in my opinion, and and probably Lambo, if they're if they're going to embrace the future, they'll never change that field. That's insane. I know, but they got to put a roof on it so that they can have a Super Bowl. Yeah. Same thing with Chicago. You're gonna to have to put a roof on Soldier Field. Well, no, they're gonna. Arrowhead roof. needs a yeah. roof. Yeah, and you the do. thing is, you nowadays they're, the design's amazing. You can do these retractable. So when the weather's nice, open it up, have an outdoor game. Right. But in those cold months, you got to be able to cap it off so that you can get your Super Bowl. See, I, I well, I agree. I'm one of these guys that I said that during the Denver during the Denver Kansas City game. I said, look, it's cool that there's snow. Yeah. But also would be a little bit easier on injury and a little bit easier on their bodies if they could play with and a little bit of cover. And now that they're asking them to play more games. Yeah, it's like, dude, know, cover these guys up. Let them let them last a little bit yeah. longer. You're already getting them to play on turf sometimes, which is, you know, from what I hear from a lot of those guys, is the, the hardest thing on their knees and their body. Yes. So it's like, all right, well, then cover it. I know that's such a, uh, you know, I get that some people are like, oh, you can't cover it up. It's supposed to be a snowball, <laughs> dude. That's a... <laughs> But it's like, no, dude, this is for the health and safety of these guys so they can continue their careers. I agree. And and I'm and on one hand, I do I am a, like I, I, I appreciate the purity of a snow game or a mud game it's cool. or a rain. Yeah. The elements. There's yes. something cool about that, and I do respect and appreciate that. I'm just thinking of now I'm thinking a little more of the, the financials of it, which is yeah. you know, when a stadium gets to be fifty years old, fifty one years old, mm-hmm. and it's time for a new stadium. You got to think about putting a retractable roof on yeah, it. Yeah, come on. Especially if you want to host a Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, it's just... Or do what Arizona did, grow grass outside, which I think is one of the coolest. I was like, how come everybody doesn't do that? Grow the grass outside. I've seen... When the field... And they, they push it in, yeah, and then they bring so it Yeah, it's so rad. Yeah, like why the, not? The, the design ability and the engineering that can be done, there's no reason not to do this stuff. Yeah, I think it's all... There's a lot of pride stuff. With Chicago, you know, our whole thing is they invested in property out in Arlington, where the racetrack used to be, but Chicago is... There's a lot of elements that are fighting on moving it because people don't want to move it. But uh, this is a boring fact. But we don't own that stadium. The city, the city does. The park district owns it. Well, they should. So we don't, we're not they, making they, all the money on it. If they want that waterfront property and they want to keep Soldier Field, just put a dome on there because that wa- that wind coming off the water is so cold. It's comical. Cold. I remember going to games as a kid. It's so cold and enjoying none of it until we got <laughs> back in the car. And not only because because it's true, uh, well, because they it's also, painful. Yeah, they also lost every time. Like as a kid, I think I went to one <laughs> game that we won, and then also you're you're having fun because you're with your friends. Yeah, especially when we were young. Like we went to a couple of rain games, like heavy, heavy rain games. I remember like my buddy Josh and Sean, and those days were rad because it was fun and you're young. Yeah. But as you start to get older and want to watch the game more, you're like, I can't do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. There's no way they like this. It's so freezing. Your face hurts. Your nose is gone. Forget yeah. it. Your nose is absolutely gone. Yeah. It's rock solid. Yeah. So it's I, painful. Yeah, it hurts. It's yeah. actual it physical sucks. pain. Yeah. And now, you know, it, it's funny because the older I get, the more I'm like, you know what? Do I want to fight the traffic, <laughs> fight the people, pay ridiculous prices at concessions, you know, all this stuff yeah. on top of the ticket, da 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 or do I want to stay in my comfy jammies on my yeah. awesome couch? My big-ass TV. Yeah, with my fireplace and my big-ass right. TV. And then w- go take a quality dump or whiz with no <laughs> no pressure, no rush, no quality people dump. staring. And not have to listen to the guy next to me blast out his right. burrito. <sighs> you know, because it's obnoxious. Like the, the men's rooms and bathrooms, you know. Yeah, they're gross. There's gross thing hideous, on right? Yeah. And so it's like, do I want all that or do I just want to stay home and... I know. I'll be good. Well, there's two things you made me think of. One, that's that's my reasoning for how much I get mad at Los Angeles because a lot of times, like with Dodger games, they black them out. What city can't you watch your own local team? I think that's lunacy to me unless you have a a certain cable provider. That's bonkers. I've said it a thousand times. Shame on the city for doing that to its own people. But also, staying at home thing. The new thing that they're pitching is the metaverse of like buying the online tickets. You know, have you seen this? Where I've heard about, it, but I, well, I don't know anything about it. Well, you put on the Quest or whatever it's called, and you can be at the game, sitting in proverbial That's seats. That's unbelievable. So you are still at home, yeah, but yeah. you're still at the game, and I think that is a hundred percent the future. To wow. supplement what you're talking about is like, why wouldn't I just rather sit at home, but but be at the game? Yeah, I'm there. I'm seeing it like it's live. I'm literally watching a live stream. I'm, and, I'm and totally like, like SoFi Stadium is a gorgeous stadium. Yeah, it's, it's really rad. beautiful. Getting in and out of SoFi? Yeah, is, gun in my mouth. It's two hours. Gun in my mouth. It's two hours either side of the game. Two hours getting in, two hours getting out. That's, 
absurd. How yeah. did they not know? How did they not build? And and how did they not build arteries in and out of that place? Didn't do it properly. I think there's one entrance and exit. And by the way, the people that work it, shout out, no hate. But every time I go, I'm always like, where's parking lot A? And they're like, mm, I have no idea. Yeah. They have no Completely. idea. Completely. They, <laughs> they, 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 have, no they idea. have not trained a single person. No, no. I got to the stadium and I was, like, I was like, do you know where this section is? And they go, no, man. No. I was like, do you know anybody that does? No, you know, man, walk like, it off. Yeah, they're like, I don't know, man. Walk it off. They, it's almost like, fuck you. How yeah. dare you ask <laughs> yeah, me? Yeah, dude, it, dude it, I'm it, working here. Yeah. Leave me alone. You're like, all right. <laughs> but it's, I'm like, did, so no one at the stadium was trained. Mm -mm. You know, no staff member got any kind of education no, or training no, on, on the stadium, the parking lots, what's where, what's, you know, and even if, like you could say, okay, even if you don't teach them everything about the, just say, this is where you're going to be working. You know, to your left is this entrance, to your right is that entrance, mm -hmm. and that's the parking lot that's out in front of you. And Get familiar with the area. Yeah, just yeah, a no, little they don't. note. And we went to go see Metallica there, and it was the funniest thing is we walked up, and I was like, I think this is the gate we're supposed to be going in. And the guy, like, looked at the tickets, and he goes, your guess is as good as mine. And I was like, <laughs> all right. Well, and it wasn't. We had to walk all the way around. But it's fine. I don't care. Yeah, but yeah. it was like, yeah, I guess we're just shooting, yeah. shooting our shot. <laughs> at some point... You do get a hold of it if you've gone enough, where you're like, I know, I think I know that the play, the side I'm supposed to be going into. Well, I'm I, this is I think I've been three night three or four times now. Yeah, and this last trip, I finally was like, okay, I think from now on, I'm only going to try to park in this parking lot. <laughs> yeah, this is the one, and I'm only going to try to use this entrance. Yeah, because this worked. This, right. You know, this was quick and easy. This works. This works. Don't upset this. <laughs> and I got out pretty easy, so I was like, okay, I'll tell no one. Right. Of this secret. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> no one will know. No one will ever know. And, and to your kids, you're like, don't say a word to any of your friends at school. <laughs> their, fa their father should not know my little secret. My dad always had little tricks like that, too, or stuff that he was like, no, no, this is the best place to park. We'll get in and out of this thing. And I was always like, I, I, how do you... Uh, dads have a way of figuring out yeah. their little tricks of whatever their thing is. Or, you know, like my mom. Shout out to my mom who called before the show. My mom, since I was a kid refuses to park at the grocery store in a regular spot because the parking lot's always filled with cars. Mm -hmm. She parks in the fire lane uh, alongside and then puts on her flasher sometimes and just goes and shops and has been doing this. By the way, I'm calling her out. They, you got a ticket or a tow her. Get her out of there. She's been doing this for so long. Dude, she parks in the fire lane illegally next to the grocery My dad's always like, you're going to get towed. She's never gotten towed, never gotten a ticket, never once. I just like the moxie of it. She does not care, I, dude. I like, I like that at some point she had had enough and was yep. like, this. I'm going to roll the dice, yeah. but this play is worth it. It, it works. I and can't believe she's never been towed. And then no, the thing is she keeps going back to the well, though. This oh, is yeah. Where, like, it, the, the day will come. She's an it. addict for good parking. <laughs> she needs to go to rehab, forget her park. But she does that all the time. She has that. My mom has got that thing in her. It's a I don't know if it's a city kid thing, but like you'll you'll just do it and let them tell me I can't do it type yeah. of vibe. Yeah. Where I, you know in L.A. I'm like, oh, they'll tow your car, they'll tow it uh, within seconds of me parking. Illegally. They can't get anything right in this town mm -mm. except for speeding tickets, parking tickets. Oh, they'll smoke you. Oh, oh yeah, it's like they you. lay in wait. They're hiding in bushes. They're yeah, little creeps. Yeah, they're yeah, just they the really worst. Do. Dude, I got but I got But they can't do anything else. No, they, no, no. Everything else has gone to shit. Yeah, but boy, they can get they can find a way to give you a ticket. Oh, yeah, my friends just got robbed. They just got their house broken into, oh, unfortunately. God. And the cop showed up and, you know, I, you feel bad cuz the guy's like, "Look, man, you know, budget constraints. Like, we can't, we don't have enough guys to, like, even really. He's like, we This get, is not going to be investigated. Yeah. He goes, We're going to get somebody at some point to come to the house. But he goes, How long can you not touch where they broke in? Yeah. And they were like, They broke into our bedroom. And he's yeah. like, Yeah. So he's like, <laughs> so, I don't know what to tell He's like, I don't know what to tell you. Tough luck. Yeah. Yeah. Good shit, tough shit. Yeah. But it sucks. Yeah. You, know, you feel bad. The cops are like, We have no, they're like, Our resources are lower than they've ever been. He's like, So, we can't do anything else. That's it's a that's, huge bummer. That's man. the genius of defunding the police. I know. Yeah, that we makes don't need all you the guys sense in the world. Unless we get robbed, yeah, then we'll need you. Unbelievable. No, yeah. So it's it sucks. It's that kind of thing where they, uh, it's it, it sucked because they were like, these guys broke in and they think it was an inside job. Uh, oh, that well, sucks I think even they more. know it was an inside. Well, because it was someone that had known where that their hurts. stuff was. That kind of stuff hurts. I know. Then you go through the whole thing. Yeah, because then you're like, house? oh, that feels more, way more violent. Who's been in my house? And I think about him because he's been in my house. McCone's been in my house. And I think if we ever get stolen from, it's got to be you. It's got to be. It's got to be him. He looks like he knows someone well, that wants to rob us. No offense, McCone, but there's so many things working against you. <laughs> Show him your hair. 
Look what he did for his hair. We did that for another show. <sighs> Jesus Christ. He commits to the bit, baby. The God kid bless. commits to the bit. You do commit, sir. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kudos big time. But also Kudos. very scary that he did it. When he did it, I thought, man, it's a bad idea. I'm glad he did it because I told him to. <laughs> or actually, I said, if you really commit, I'll be real proud. You look like a, a young Gallagher. He does. He really does right look now. like Gallagher. He really does with the the hair. and All you need is a sludge matic my friend. But the only thing he's breaking is my heart. <laughs> Gallagher was Gallagher was one of those guys that I remember as a kid, uh, uh, you know, not to like, I'm not dissing him, but yeah. I remember thinking it was so incredibly funny, like <laughs> absurdly funny. And then I got older and I was like, this is funny, but I don't know if it's that funny. Like yeah, yeah, it yeah. was, it was just crazy more yeah. than funny. But well, it was, it was a hundred percent unique. Yeah. It was so different. And Nobody so, was doing it, was, it. So it was, he had his, he had his own lane. Totally. And that's, and, and back in the, back in the day that made all the difference. Well, that's how, because I mean, like Stephen Wright yeah. had his own lane. Because of his delivery. Yeah, totally. And so he had his lane, and Gallagher had his lane, and Steven and Wright. Kennison had his lane. Yeah. And it was all because they had their own signature. You have such a love for stand-up. I mean, you're, like, you, I, you've got a I, big old crush on it. I do. I, I grew up loving I remember in the 80s, my you know my dad dropping me off to see Sam Kennison down at Kansas City Municipal Auditorium. Wow. You know, and, and Stephen Wright. I would go see all the comedians. I, I, you, my, one of my first jobs uh, when I was in college um, I was a 19 year old uh, doorman. I wasn't big enough to be a bouncer or whatever, but I was a doorman. Yeah, that's it. At Stanford and Sons Comedy Club. No shit. Yeah. With Craig Glazer. Yeah. Craig Glazer. Hey. Rest in yeah, peace. Yeah, rest in peace. God bless. Rest in peace. There was a club <laughs> owner from. We've talked about it sometimes on this show, but Craig, Craig, uh, Craig's no longer with us. I, the first one of the first times I ever played that club, he was a club owner of a, the club in Kansas City. He picked me up from the airport in a Lotus in a little <laughs> tiny sports car. They're they're the smallest things on earth, yeah, right? Yeah. And I'm not particularly a short guy. And uh, I'm cramped in this little lotus with my luggage on my lap, you know, my duffel bag on my this lap. This is so quintessential. And my neck, my neck is like craned like yeah, this. Yeah. And he's like, and he's like, yeah, man, it's gonna be a great weekend. And yeah. uh, you're, dude, you're gonna rip. You're gonna love the new the new club. What we've done to the club. That's exactly how he sounded. It, uh, spot on. You know, what it's done, spot what on. What we've done to the club, Santino. You're gonna lose your shit. And and then I. And That's then, exactly. And he was he was always chain smoking. Always smoking. Smoking. With the chain. windows closed in yeah. the Lotus, he would keep them closed. And oh. I was like, Craig, can we crack the window? Yeah. And he's like, No, man, I'm gonna give you my. It's book. getting into my clothes, Craig. Jesus yeah, Christ. It's soaking through my soul. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and this I'll never forget, dude. He picked me up in the Lotus, and he goes, "We gotta go pick up a friend of mine." And I and I thought, "This How? is a two seat car. Yeah, there are no other seats." Yeah. And I j laugh. I j I thought he was a joke, and I go, "Yeah, yeah, we'll put him on the roof." Yeah. And he goes, "No, no, we do. We gotta pick her up." And he used to call her Black Barbie. That was her name. She was this beautiful young black girl who was got. I'm not kidding. She was wearing heels, but even without heels, maybe five eleven. Yeah. So in heels, maybe six three. Oh wow. And I go, I go. Oh, we are really picking up. Yeah, yeah, you got to pick up Black Barbie. You should go. She'll love you. You're gonna love her. You're gonna hang with us all day. We'll go get lunch. <laughs> this young, beautiful black woman comes up to the car, and I go, "Oh, you, uh, am I? Do you want me to get out? Like, yeah. I'm thinking, should I walk yeah, to the am hotel? I taking a cab from here, right? Am I... I get out of the car, and yeah. he's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And I was like. What, what is she going to sit on my lap? How Craig? is this happening? Yeah. And he goes, Oh, no, she'll get in the back. Don't worry about it. And she's like, I'll get, I'll, I've been in the back before. I'll do it. And I was like, Please don't get in the back of the. I was like, Can I just walk to the hotel? Yeah, please. But, this but is Craig. You're making it worse, Craig. No, he's insane. But that's so his style. Yes. That was so him. He's like, oh, Come on, get in the back, baby. Get in the back. Yeah. And this poor woman is like crawling in the back. I'm like, No, 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 dude. I'm going to walk. Yeah. It's a mile or so away. I'm going to walk. And he was like, no, no, no walk. Come on, man. Too cold to walk. So I, I'm like you. So I would roll into town. Uh, so I worked there when I was in college or whatever. But then when I came back doing stand-up, uh, uh, same thing. But when we go do the radio you know, tour, the radio shows for to promote the show. Yeah, the radio gonna, tour. I know that. You know, and, and you, you Bob go. Bob and Tom. Yeah, and, and you'd hit like Johnny Dare. Johnny these, Dare. That was it. Yeah, hit that's these right. guys. And you'd walk in and they'd be like, oh, Jesus, here's Craig, you know. Right. And the whole time, it was just ripping off Craig. I know. Remember, he'd be like, what the hell? What do you want from me? What do you want and from me? And it's not about you. At some point, <laughs> you're know. like, am I plugging then, my the, show? Exactly. At, at the very end of this hour-long, you know, fuck on, on Craig, Craig, they'd go, and uh, and Riggle, you're going to be at the, the club this weekend, right? You're like, <laughs> I think so, <laughs> unless I should just leave. Yo, Craig, am I here? Am I, I, I always hated that. Yeah, they would <laughs> rag on him for the longest time. You're going to love radio. And I would do four of them. And he'd be like, you got to be up 5 o'clock. In your hallway, yeah. ready to rock. <laughs> and I'd be miserably hungover like, and tired. Everybody in this fucking town knows I'm here. We're yeah. done. We're done. It's over. Yeah, we're nah, done. No, man, I got to know, man. 
<laughs> and one time I remember he was like, we're building a catwalk. Wait till you see a fuck. We're going to build a fucking catwalk. And I was like, is there a, are you doing like modeling shows? Why would we? He's like, no, rock star comics need catwalks. He always thought like, he had this way about him that yeah. He almost even if you knew he was wrong, he would convince you like I don't know, maybe that's a fucking good idea. I have no and, idea. And you really to to appreciate Craig, you had to appreciate the fact that he ran hot and loose. Yeah, he was absurd. Yeah, it was I mean, he 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 had been to the federal pen. <laughs> yeah, he had yeah. been to he had been he had lived a life. Let's just say that he had lived yes. a life. He was a distributor at one point. He was a he <laughs> lived a hard fast life <laughs> fast lane life. Yeah, dude. So if you were with him, it was always a, just a character study. Yeah, we, we, no, honestly, and it was what not to do. It was kind of, uh, <laughs> and God bless, rest in peace. I, yeah, rest I, in you know, peace. the guy was always peace. good to me. Yeah. Those guys, that, those guys that yeah, gave I'm me not my saying, start. I, I didn't mean to make that no, sound like no, I was picking know. on it, but I just want people to know he ran loose and fast. So when you were with him, it was like being shot out of a cannon. Yeah. yeah. Well, like those guys that gave, like who were some other clubs that like gave you the, the shot when you were young? Like who gave you a, a spot? You know, like. Was he one of the guys that like kind of put you on earlier than you uh, than you should have? Maybe, or no? yeah, yes. I will say that yes. I, I shouldn't have been headlining. Yeah, and he let me. Same for me. It was he really let, great. He let me headline. I had like thirty eight minutes, and he's like, "You're fine, dude." Yeah, yeah. You just and ramble for twenty more. I think that's. I think he he was very gracious about that. There was a couple, you know, like New York, uh, um, uh, stand up New York there on 79th and Broadway. They were pretty nice to me. UCB Theater was gracious. Yeah. The Slipper Room. A lot of New York piano room, you know, like a lot of New Put York. Put you on a little bit. Gave me, gave me, this, gave what me about, the stage what, time. What about you in performing now? Well, now I, I haven't done stand-up in, in, God, 10 years. I know, so. but why not? Um, honest truth was I got Fox NFL. Yeah. And that, uh, I was making enough money from that that it kind of made up for the stand-up. Because sure. I wasn't making much money. I was doing club acts. You know, I wasn't selling out theaters or yeah. anything. But do you so, could now, though? Uh, maybe. Maybe. But my set is obviously way too old, and it's tired. It's been... It's, I've run it all Let's across the country. Let's get you humming again, baby. So I got, I got to create a new set. And and I remember creating that first set. That was... A, to me, it was a beast. It took a, it took like a year and a half to get that 45, it's 50 great. minutes, yeah. you know? And I was like, God, that, you know, uh, so the thought of, of diving back in. And the thing was like, when I started the standup, it was in New York and you could hit New York city. You could hit five mics a night. Yeah, totally. And, and all you had to do is jump in a cabin, bing, bang, boom. You know, you were, you, you could get the work right here. I live way out, way out in the burbs. You're right, right? right, right. I live out way out there. And so I'd have to drive all the way in to maybe get a, a five minute spot at one place. And then I'd have to put my name on that. And then, haul ass maybe to a second place sure and get my name on that list maybe for another five minutes so you're talking about hours for maybe total of 10 minute stage time too much in la it's tough it is i know but you're at a level where you could i mean i've, I've said that too we have mutual friends of course we have uh our sarah tiana is probably our closest bond yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I, we've talked many times about you and about you know because your brain the way it works and your comedic past i've always thought I've said that to her multiple times. I was like, I wonder if he would ever dive back in. And, I have, uh, I have I, wanted to. I, I think just you should, man. I would love to. I, I, it's one of those things too where I gotta. It's a gut check for me. I gotta get. I kind of gotta get. My, but isn't that kind of great? It is. I, I like being scared. Yeah, that's. I exactly, like that, being dude, scared. That's funny. I love it and I hate it. I love it and I hate it. But that's the best part. I know. I gotta. Yeah, I, just fuck, gotta you, I gotta kick myself in the ass. Rogan but, used know. to say that to me all the time. By the way, whenever it's like. Uh, <laughs> right before I go on stage, sometimes when I was touring with him, he'd be like, "Smoke this joint with me." I'm like, "I don't want to." He's like, "You're afraid to be scared," <laughs> and I was like, "All right, dude." And well, I, he knows what buttons to push. Well, but it would work because he was true. He's like, "They would have worked on me." He's like, "Do it, do it." Let's, it would have worked see. on and me. It, it's a, like a fun experiment. He's like, "You're comfortable, so yeah. put yourself in a little uncomfortable position and see how well you get out of it." And it was kind of like a trick of, uh, and it wasn't like substance is the way to trick yourself. I got but it. it was just one little thing of yeah. him going, see how uncomfortable yeah. you are. Here's an obstacle. Let's see how you navigate it. And yeah. And it actually, sometimes I was like, wow, it's fucking rad. Yeah. Because it was heavy. It feels heavy. And then you're like, all right, I know how to do this. I know how to figure this there out. There is something I will say, what I do miss. It's it, it's not the life. Because, you know. The uh, life is shit. Life is hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I did miss is the nights when you really connected. The nights when you were, you, you know, the audience was ready yeah you were ready yeah and you were speaking the same language yeah man those were such special nights when man. you're humming it's a different vibration what yeah. it does to you unfortunately is that night i just can't cool down cool off i, mean, I couldn't either yeah, it's really so, tough and, and as the headliner you know you you're the last guy so you good night everybody one o'clock in the morning right 12 30 whatever it was 
and then your adrenaline is cooking with gas. So so you go out with the the guys that you know perform for food, with. get drinks. You get some drinks. By the time you're at some diner at five in the morning, uh-huh. finishing off, you know, right. some, and you're like, God, why do I keep gaining weight? Why am right, I, right. You, know, you know, why am I exhausted? <laughs> right. You know, and and then you're like, oh, I got to calm down. So you burn a cigarette. You exactly. Know? Like. It's a fucking hard life. It's tough. Yeah, it's not It's not good for you. So I do know why you're not getting back into it. That being said. As long as they got milkshakes. If they got yeah. milkshakes, I, I got a new vice. It's milkshakes. We'll, we'll get now. that milkshake club going. Uh, I'll, of course, uh, I'll of course put the uh, link in the description below. I want to thank the Riggs for coming by. We got to golf again soon, as soon as I'm back to good health. Yes. I'm in bad back health right now. I'm still dealing with nonsense, dude. Oh, dude, I hate that. The back is everything. Yeah, I know, and especially with golf, it's like, and I've had so many people be like, "Hey, can you play?" And I'm like, "I can't," and I want to so bad. But uh, when we do get back, you and I are going to get back out and smack it let again. Me, let me know when you when you're feeling it, when you're feeling like you're ready. Yeah, we'll get. We'll start. To let me know around. because you're just right down the road here, man. I know. Let's go. Mm. We'll, we'll we'll start to we'll start to get back in it. Uh, Riggs Picks is uh, uh, available for you to uh, get out and enjoy right now. We'll link it below if you. Um, if you would please look into that camera right there. We end the episode the same way with one word or one phrase. Um, it depends on how much you want to divulge. It could be something quick. It could be something very heartfelt and meaningful. But when you're ready, into that camera, you end the episode. Acta non verba. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me five dollars for the whiskey and seventy-five dollars for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers.